verse 7 says, O oh Lord, you induced me, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. But when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted violence and plunder because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, then I said, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more of his name. In other words, Jeremiah says, I quit. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back and I could not. I need you to just say my title. Um, everybody just shout, let it out. Let it out. Let it out. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let it out. Let it out. Um, potential. Potential is dormant ability. It is reserve power. It is untapped strength. Potential is unused success. It is hidden talents, capped capabilities. Potential is all that you can be, but you have not yet become. All that you can do, but you have not yet done. Potential is how far you can reach, but you have not yet reached. What you can accomplish, but you have not yet accomplished. Potential is unexposed ability and concealed power. Potential is therefore not what you have done, but what you are yet able to do. In other words, what you have done is no longer your potential. What you have successfully accomplished is no longer potential. Listen, people of God, what you must understand is that there is a great deal of potential on the inside of you. Tell somebody there's a lot of potential in me. Here's the point you have to grab tonight, and that is in order for our great potential to be released, we must die to ourselves. Now, before... We jump to the B clause of this thesis. Let's consider uh, this part about great potential because not everyone believes they have great potential. However, you must understand the potential principle. To simplify this concept, let's look at one of the most powerful elements in nature, a seed. One definition of a seed is a material used to start something. Hmm. Dr. Miles Monroe uses the great example. He says, if I held a seed in my hand and asked you, what do I have in my hand? What would you say? Perhaps your answer would be obvious, a seed. However, if you understand the nature of a seed, your answer would in fact be fact, but not truth. The truth is I hold a forest in my hand. Why? Because in every seed there is a tree, and in every tree there are fruit and flowers with seeds in them. And these seeds also have trees that have fruit that have seeds, that have trees that have fruit that have seeds. Are y'all with me here? So in essence, what you see is not all there is. What you see is not all there is. That is potential. Not what is, but what could be. You see, that's why uh, we need not surround ourselves with people who can only see what we used to be or only see our current situation and struggles because what you see is not all there is to me. I need y'all to push me because I don't feel it. Uh, God created everything with potential, including you. He placed the seed of each thing within itself. 
Genesis 1 and 12. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and he planted within each person or thing he created the ability to be much more than it is at any moment. Let me back up and say that again. Whatever God has created, he created it with the ability to be more than it is at any moment. I don't care what level you reach in your life. I don't care what degree level you reach in your life, uh, what status and income you reach in your life. There is more that God has on the inside of you. Potential, potential is always present waiting to be exposed it demands that you never settle for what you have accomplished yeah. Woo, lord have mercy uh never settle for what you have accomplished uh when you study you study the writings come on mind when you study the writings of paul paul says i am forgetting those things which are behind uh, now whenever we think about that we think that paul is saying i'm forgetting the negative things of my past but no paul was saying i'm forgetting my bad and my good i'm forgetting my accomplishments as well because if i continue to dwell on my accomplishments I will never go forward and get what the next thing is that God has prepared that's some of y'all problem because some of you you just got too good of a resume and because you have too good of a resume there's this spirit of entitlement that rests upon you uh, the truth of the matter is we don't care what you have accomplished when you have so much more to accomplish but I help somebody you are not yet what you're supposed to be, though you may be pleased with where you are now. Don't accept your present state in life as final because it is just your current state. Touch your name and say, it won't be like this always. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It won't be like this always. And if you would just just say these words and try not to shout. Everybody shout. My now is not my forever. Uh, Lord have mercy uh, no 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 don't, don't you try to judge me by the way my life is going right now uh, because this ain't it no 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 I know what you see right now but this is not it with the potential that God has placed on the inside of me ain't no telling how high up I'm getting ready to go but I can reassure you that this ain't it Tell somebody, this ain't it. This ain't it. I know you see what I'm driving now, but this ain't it. I know. I know it seems like I just got a little bit of money right now, but this ain't it. I know you see me struggling right now, but this ain't it. And on the flip side, I know you see the nice clothes I'm wearing, but this still ain't it. I, I know that you see my gift making room for me, but this still ain't it. If you are mad at what God is doing in my life now, Lord, you get ready to throw up because I'm getting ready to soar to another level because this ain't it. There's so much more. There's so much more that God has for me. I'm almost done. The potential that you possess requires that you never settle for what you have. Never accept failure, but then again, never accept success. Never accept falling short, but never accept accomplishments. Never accept being jobless, but never accept the position on your job right now. Never settle for less because you are God's offspring. There's many selves within you that lie dormant, untapped, and unused. You see, our primary problem is that you don't think like God does. God is always looking for what is not yet visible on the inside of us. He expects to find inside each person or thing he created more than is evident on the outside. Look how he saw uh, potential in his own son Jesus. He looked down in a manger and saw a king. He looked at a servant and saw a savior. He looked at a sacrifice and saw salvation. He looked at crucifixion and saw resurrection. He looked at death and he was working at life he looked at defeat and saw victory God looks beyond the surface to the potential that is deep within you 
Lord have mercy. On the other hand, man is often satisfied with what he has. Or at least if he's not satisfied, he thinks there is nothing better. So he settles for what he has. But I need you to touch your neighbor and say, there's more, there's more, there's more. There is more, you see, you see, and, and your truth, the truth of the matter is, I may not look like there's more on the inside of me, ah, but tell your neighbor, I'm chosen by God. Come here, prophet. They, uh, they sent the prophet down there to where David was. Uh, but David was out there tending to sheep and his brothers were in the house. And God said, just pour the oil. And whoever the oil falls on, uh, that's the chosen one. Uh, and the priest, uh, the prophet was out of line. Uh, he was out of line because uh, he was looking through his vision. And he tried to pour the oil on one brother. It didn't work. Uh, tried to pour it on another brother and another brother and another brother brother and it didn't work ah, because man is always looking on the outward appearance but God is looking at the heart Lord have mercy and I don't care if you don't meet the qualifications that you think you have to meet and you don't look to standard that you think you have to look but the truth of the matter is ah, if God has chosen you it doesn't matter what man thinks Lord have mercy if God has chosen you and man doesn't agree with God's choice, God will pick you up out of the choice of man and put you in a place where you are accepted. Lord, have mercy. Uh, yes, sir. You cannot settle. You cannot settle. Tell your neighbor you cannot settle. You cannot settle and then you cannot allow anything to hinder you from releasing your potential. You, you see, oftentimes we hold back, we cover, we hide what we can do. We hide what we're willing to do. We hide what we've dreamed of doing because we allow our potential to be hindered. There are three things that hinder our potential. We're going to hit these three and then we're going to be out of here. The first thing that hinders your potential is people. Lord have mercy. First thing that hinders your, your, your potential is people. People, uh, and you got to understand because people have personal agendas. They, 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 they have sneaky ways. They have nasty attitudes. And they got a lot of mouth. And it has kept many of us from releasing the potential on the inside of us. That's why you better be very close uh, or very careful who you allow close to you. Uh, you better be very careful who you allow in your circle of influence. Uh, you have to be careful uh, how you reveal your dreams to people. Uh, you, you have to watch who you fellowship and eat out with. Uh, you have to be careful who you, y'all ain't talking to me, socialize with. Uh, you even have to be careful who you church with. Uh, oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, come here, 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Be not deceived. Uh, evil communications bad company corrupts good manners. Can I talk to some of you all who are always running to a place of feeling like you're inadequate because some people won't talk to you and some people don't seem to want to accept you. The truth of the matter is they can't accept you because they can't handle the level God's getting ready to take you to. Lord have mercy. Don't get mad because that group got their little click and they don't want to let you in. Well, go do what you want to do because maybe there's something greater that God has in store for me. Can I tell you something uh, from personal experience? God ain't going to let you be a part of cliques when you're born to be a leader. No, uh, no, 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 no. So you're going to have to get used to being rejected. Get used to be pushed to the side because the potential that's on the inside of you, if you connect with them, you will connect with the very ones that are set up to stab you in the back you can't release potential in you when you're hanging around people that don't care about the potential in them I, I told y'all, I told y'all, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to say it again. You, 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 you can't release the potential on the inside of you if you keep hanging around people who don't care about the potential in them. I told y'all the other day, you need to look at your friends and find out why they always broke. 
You need to look at your friends and find out why they don't never get their hair done. They don't never, they don't never clean themselves up. They don't, they, they ain't never trying to do nothing. They don't never want to go nowhere. They ain't never trying to get a degree, a degree. They ain't never trying to up their education. They don't want to do nothing. I'm trying to figure out why they still your friend. You need people, you need people around you who can sense and see the potential on the inside of you. Uh, come here, Mary, Jesus. They done ran out of wine. Uh, and Jesus says, all right, mama, what you telling me this for? Because it ain't my time yet. Mary turns around anyway and tells the workers, the servants, she says, whatever he says, do, do it. Why? Because Mary, not seeing anything that Jesus has done, but she can see the potential on the inside of him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got me in your corner. And you're getting ready to turn water into wine. I'm going to push you to the next level. Lord, have mercy. You need some people around you who believe in you enough that when you say, I can't right now, they said, yes, you can. My father taught me something. My father taught me something, and I hope you grasp it tonight. He told me there's only two types of people. I told you all this before. Two types of people that will come into your life. One person will come into your life and help push you further in the things of God. The other person comes into your life to hold you back from where God is calling you to. Our problem is we can't tell who is doing what. One reason you can't tell who is doing what is because you're so stuck and depressed because you ain't got no friends. And you always need somebody around you. You always got to have somebody. Y'all ain't talking. You always got to have somebody in your court. Everybody against you and don't nobody want to be on your side. You always got to have somebody in your corner. Uh, the truth of the matter is you got to understand this. One person comes into your life to push you further. The other person comes to hold you back. You need to get some spiritual discernment so you can tell who is doing what. Our problem is by the time we figure them out much damage has already been done. You need to look in your life and see who's who. The second hinderer of our potential. The first hinderer of our potential is, is, is people. People. And, and Jeremiah clears this up because Jeremiah says, listen, you, you, you overpowered me. You, you, you overpowered me. You, you pushed me to do this. Uh, and and, and you, you, you got me looking like a public joke. You, you, you got me looking crazy. I'm out here saying what you told me to say. I, I'm pouring out of myself everything that you told me to do, God. And you got me out here looking crazy. People are talking about me. You can't get distracted when it seems like people are running their mouth concerning the things that you're doing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Now, 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 let me say this. Because some of y'all always talking about stuff that you never do. That's why people talking about you. That's why you make premature announcements and you never get to the thing. And that's why people are talking about you. But there's some of us that are trying to do what God has placed on the inside of us and people are talking about us. Jeremiah said, I'm trying to do what you called me to do and people are talking about me. So, so the first hinderer is, is, is people. The second hinderer uh, is the enemy himself. Satan, Satan is a trickster. Satan is a manipulator. He is a con artist. And he'll do whatever it takes to keep you from unlocking your full potential. The way he does it is get it into your mind. Because the devil understands that if the best way to control somebody's behavior is to control their thinking. Uh, yes, sir. If he can keep you thinking less, then you'll be less. Uh, I try to teach this as often as possible. And that is about the law of concentration, which states that whatever you think about on the continual basis actually becomes a part 
of your life. Whatever you dwell upon actually grows in your life experience. The devil, the devil knows that. That's why he tries to get into your mind and get you to concentrate on what seems like uh, to be true, but it really ain't so. Some of you would have the degree by now, but you allow the devil into your mind and make you concentrate on other stuff that you failed at. Uh, yes, some of you would be uh, out of that test that you're in right now uh, had you not allowed the devil to cause you to concentrate on the test itself instead of the benefits of the test. Uh, the devil is a strong hinderer. Uh, he's a strong hinderer of your potential, uh, but you have to be bold with the enemy and cast down every high thing uh, that tries to exalt itself uh, against the knowledge of God. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, failure is not an option for me. Uh, no, no, no. I don't care what the devil says. Failure is not an option for me. I wish I had somebody to declare it today. Failure is not an option for me. I shall not fail. Uh, everything that I have purpose in my life to do, everything that I have written down, everything that God has placed in my spirit, I shall not fail. I shall not fail. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, the third hinderer, I'm getting ready to close. The third hinderer, the third hinderer of your potential is yourself. Our own will, if I don't hoop, you'll be all right. Our own ego, our own prestige, our, our own desires. Our own plans, our opinions, our reputations, our self-confidence, our natural affections, our own thoughts, our words, and our lives cause our potential to be hindered from exposure. That's why I told you in the beginning that in order for our great potential to be released, we must die. Lord, we, we must die. To ourselves. Now, it's not a physical death, natural death, but it is a spiritual death. You, you have to die to yourself if you want God to grant you a freshness in your life. Lord, have mercy. If you want God uh, to start something new in your life, you must die to your old ways, your, your old desires, your old way of thinking. Our problem is we keep battling with ourself daily, but we keep letting our flesh win over our spirit, man. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, you see, it is the flesh that keeps pushing you to the place where you want to play victim in your life. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all ain't talking to me here, but uh, that's the problem with a lot of you, and that's why everything that God has given you is still on paper because every time stuff doesn't work out you play the victim game uh, every time things don't come into fruition like you want you play the victim game and that's the same way Jeremiah was are y'all with me here that's the same way Jeremiah was he came to God in this 20th chapter he comes to God and he says God you push me into this and I let you do it you you were too much for me you made me a public joke they they poke fun at me every time I open my mouth I'm shouting what you told me to shout uh, but but it's just not turning out the way I thought it was going to turn out and so Jeremiah starts playing the blame game and he blames it on people he blames it on God himself he keeps playing the victim when the truth of the matter is uh, Jeremiah needed to look within himself uh, oh Lord have mercy uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor uh, Someday, sooner or later, you have to face yourself. Stop blaming people for what you're dealing with. Stop blaming people for what has not come to pass. And you got to learn how to stand up and look yourself in the face. Look in the mirror and say, this is my fault. I don't have.
have the degree because it's my fault. I haven't started the business. It's my fault. Y'all ain't talking to me here. I know I'm hitting you hard. I haven't gone to the next level because it's my fault. I have not gone in my anointing because it's my fault. I am my own problem. And I need to own up and confess that it's my fault that it's on this altar as an idea and not in my bank account as income. You got to get to the place where you say it's my fault. Jeremiah, Jeremiah plays the victim game. Some of you need to be delivered from playing the victim. Every time something doesn't work out in your favor, you got 15 people to blame. When the truth, y'all quiet, you're quiet. I told you, you got you to gotta talk to the preacher the whole time so your neighbor won't know he's talking about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of you play the victim game. And that's why as a church collectively, we cannot move forward because the potential that's on the inside of you, you won't release it because you are blaming other people and things for it not coming to pass. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Jeremiah played the victim game. And then Jeremiah let the victim game push him to the place where he says this. He says, you know what? I quit. Not doing this no more. No. I'm not doing this no more. I've been working for you. I've been pouring out of myself. I've been following your directions. And it's not working. I quit. God, here's my resignation. I will not make mention of of your name anymore I quit some of you you're not saying it but you're in the same place right now because of your inactivity which stops your progress you have said to God I quit the fact that you were able to bring this this vision to church today lay it on this altar and you still haven't made that jump What you've said to God is, I quit. God has placed an anointing. Before I formed you, Jeremiah, I knew you. I I had a plan for you. I had a purpose for you. I ordained you. I put everything that you needed to get done, what I wanted you to get done, I put it on the inside of you. 20 chapters later, here you are talking about, I quit. How many of you? in this room tonight had made up your mind that you quit. Some of you are supposed to be in ministry now. Somewhere down the line, you quit. That's why you skip church. Because conviction rests on you so heavy that you don't want to be in the presence of God because it means you have to face yourself. You quit. You quit. You quit. You you watch this. You keep making up excuses. It sounds like this. I don't know what my purpose is. When God has revealed it to you time and time again. But you keep trying to play the blame game so you won't have to walk in what God, you're looking for every excuse you can use. So you won't have to walk in what God has called you to do. Jeremiah said, you know what? I quit. Jeremiah sat down. (laughs) He sat down. Here's the amazing thing. Here's the amazing thing, Drew. Jeremiah sits down and he feels something. He said, I quit. But something on the inside of him would not let him throw in the towel. Here's what you got to understand. God put Jeremiah in ministry but he also put ministry in Jeremiah so when Jeremiah wanted to let it go it wouldn't let him go that's why Jeremiah said his word is like fire 
And every time I try to get away from it, it's burning on the inside. I want to quit, but I can't quit. It's burning on the inside. Some of y'all been burning huh? because God has been waking you up 3 o'clock in the morning. You ain't hungry with your greedy self. God is trying to expose what's on the inside of you. Huh? He's making it burn. Yes, sir. There's a vision on the inside. There are dreams on the inside. And when you want it to quit, God said, no, 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 no. I put you in the dream, but I also put the vision inside of you. So when you want to let it go, it won't let you go. Touch your name and say, you might as well give in to this because it ain't going to let you go. That's why you got to make up your mind that when I die, I will die empty. Lord, have mercy. Everything that God has put on the inside of me, I'm going to make sure I give birth to it. Oh, have mercy. Ah, God's getting ready now to push you into a place of labor. Oh, yes, sir. I speak that prophetically over this room today. That God's getting ready to push you to a place of labor. Ah, yes, sir. I want you to understand ah, what you're feeling in your spirit right now. The conviction you're feeling in your heart right now. The burning sensation is the contractions. Because God's trying to let you know that what I put on the inside of you sooner or later it's got to come to pass Lord shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor there's too much in me for me to give up now I refuse to quit Lord, have mercy. I refuse to give up. I refuse to throw in the tower. Let me testify real quick. I've only been in this thing for five years. But it's been some hard times. In the beginning of the ministry, Zay, when I walked in and got the offering total, and it was in the teens. When I got the offering total, and it was under a hundred dollars, I said to God, this ain't what you called me to when I saw myself pulling out of my pockets pulling out of my household to take care of God's house I said God this is not what you called me to do and I got to the place Nehemiah where I said I might as well hang this up I don't want to mess up the Mount Moriah brand I don't want to mess up my daddy's name so let me go ahead and give this to somebody else who can handle this load better than I can and then God shook me and convicted my spirit and he said to me though the vision dairy wait on it grab your neighbor's hand and say neighbor it may not be coming to pass on the timeline you desire but wait on it cause any day now God's getting ready to bring it to pass shake your neighbor's hand I got to get home to some Benadryl shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor there's too much on the inside of me for me to quit I cannot quit but I shall bring forth everything that God put in me it's on the inside when I try to sit down it's bubbling up I go to a job every day that I don't like and it's bubbling up Lord have mercy I got to deal with people that I don't like and it's bubbling up ah, Lord have mercy I'm staying in a house an apartment that I don't like and it's bubbling up I'm operating on a level beneath my potential and it's bubbling up I came to tell you today let it out whatever God has put inside of you let it out it's burning like fire shut up in your bones 2020 is the year that you let it out 
Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Until your income goes up. Let it out. Until it comes to pass. Let it out. Until you drive it. Let it out. Until you live in it. Let it out. Until the anointing raises. Let it out. Until the vision comes to pass. Let it out. Until you're walking across the stage with the degree in your hand grab your neighbor and say neighbor let it out what God has for you it is for you I got to close but before I close I need you to declare this on today just open your mouth and say Lord whatever Y'all ain't preaching. I said, say, Lord, whatever you place on the inside of me, I want to make sure that it comes to pass. I shall not die, but I shall live until it comes to pass. I shall not throw in the towel, but I shall live until it comes to pass. If you believe it, see it. I need y'all to move. Move and go touch two people and say, let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. The dream, let it out. The vision, let it out. What God has placed in you, let it out. Stop running from your calling. Stop running from your assignments. Stop making excuses and walk in what God has called you to do. Forget about your own excuses and what you can't see. Yourself doing if God called you to it. He will. Monique, carry you through it. Tell somebody, keep going. God's got you covered. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 10. Yes, sir. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ unto good works which God hath before ordained that we shall walk in. If God has called you to it, he wants you to walk in your calling. You can't be afraid of people. God's got your back. You can't be afraid of the enemy. God's got you covered. And you got to learn to control yourself because God has you covered. And if God before me who can be against me if God has my back the devil can't stop me yes sir God has me covered and if God has me covered the devil or people and I can't let myself shut me down it shall come out of me it shall come out of me if you believe it see him Tell somebody there's too much in me. There's too much in me. There's too much in me. I'm gonna let you go home, but there's too much in me. There's too much in me. There's too much in me. And what God has for me, it is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. And He that has be gone up a good work up perform it up until the day up, of Jesus Christ up see yeah. if you got something on this altar I want you to run to the altar
If you have a vision for your life, run to the altar. Stay right there. Run to the altar. If you have a vision for your life, run to the altar. If you have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a, a, two, two, a 2020 plan, run to the altar. Run, run. We get ready to make some declarations. Come close, come close, come close. Move, 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 move. Right where you are, lift your hands. Lift your hands, lift your hands. It shall come to pass. Open your mouth and say, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall happen. Come on, declare it. I will not hold myself back. I will not be my own hindrance. Come on, come on. I won't let the enemy hold me back. I won't let people hold me back. If it's on the inside of me, it shall come forth. Come on, confess it to Jesus. Confess it to him.